Stan Jibalisco here uh, to explain the functions of the component in a transformer coupled system of amplifiers uh, in Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics 6th edition you will find this uh, illustration as figure 26-9 in the chapter on amplifiers and oscillators. Uh, although the figure number may differ in other editions of the book, it should appear in all editions of, of uh, Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics in the chapter on amplifiers and oscillators, or specifically amplifiers. What we have is two, in this particular case, is two NPN, bipolar transistor amplifier stages, coupled by a transformer, that is to say the output of the first amplifier goes to the input of the second, uh, through a transformer with a powdered iron core, as you can tell by the dashed line. The purpose of this transformer is twofold to isolate completely the two stages for direct current and also to match the impedances, match the output impedance of the first stage to the input impedance of the second stage. Remember the impedance transfer ratio of a transformer is proportional to the square of the turns ratio. So if this is a 2 to 1 turns ratio transformer, you'll find that the impedance transfer ratio is 4 to 1. For example, 3000 ohms and 750 ohms, for example. Now as for the functions of these components here, resistor R1 provides positive bias for the first stage at the collector uh, while uh, and C1 allows for the signal to be at ground effectively for at the base of this transformer not here at the top end but at the bottom end uh, you may not need R1 and C1 if you have sufficient resistance or depending upon the nature of the input circuits here but in general uh, you will find these resistors. The purpose of R2 and R3 the, uh, in combination is as a voltage divider circuit to set the base voltage of this second transistor at some point between ground potential and the power supply potential plus 12 volts. R2 and R3 form the voltage divider. We're assuming that the winding of the transformer is essentially a short circuit for direct current, although certainly not necessarily a short circuit for alternating current. And the bypass capacitor C2 places the bottom end of the secondary winding of the transformer at ground potential for signal not for direct current. The same here, C1 places the bottom of the transformer at ground potential for signal, but certainly in this case not for direct current. So in effect what we get is optimal impedance matching between the amplifier stages Q1 and Q2 provided that we choose the proper turns ratio for this transformer. Again, it is a powdered iron transformer and in today's world that would most likely mean a powdered iron toroid core transformer. Um, you can't have an air core toroid. Uh, if it were RF applications you might use an air core transformer but then you run into the problem of stray capacitances with external components and uh, difficulty in construction physically of the circuit to keep interaction from occurring between the transformer and its surrounding components.
so powdered iron, not laminated iron. Laminated iron would be used for 60 hertz AC applications like you would find, or 50 hertz, depending upon the country that you're in, uh, that you might find in a power supply. The dashed line indicates powdered iron, not laminated iron, and not air. And again, it's probably a toroidal core transformer. This is a generic circuit. It does not specify component values or frequencies or impedances, but I hope that I have outlined the functions of these uh, components sufficiently so that you understand what each one does. In the ideal case, Q1 will amplify uh, the signal somewhat, perfectly matched. Q2 will amplify it even more and you could conceivably cascade a third stage after this one uh, but more than likely this will be a power amplifier used to drive for example a speaker in an audio amplifier or uh, perhaps uh, an impedance matching network leading to an antenna system in radio frequency applications in most cases, R2 and R3 provide the proper bias for stage Q2 to operate in class A. That means that it has no distortion and that the DC bias is in the middle of the straight line portion of the characteristic curve of the transistor. All of this is covered elsewhere and in various places in Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, all editions, although this specifically was robbed from figure 26-9 in Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, 6th edition. A viewer requested that I make some videos outlining the functions of individual components in the circuits, or at least some of the circuits, in Chapter 26. And I hope I'm doing right by this viewer and right by you, too. Maybe you know a little more now than you did before. Like uh, Stan Gibalisco always signs off with the standby phrase, So long.